Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday. I am going to attempt to do some prep work for you folks to explain my book because it's very complicated. It's very nerdy, uh, partly channeled. Um, there were times when I was writing this, I'd go back and go, I don't know where that came from. Because it's, it's, it's from the ethers, I swear, I don't know. I feel like the Maya helped me write it. But what we need to understand for the average person on the street is what we really are, okay? So what I'm going to do is present some physics facts. So let me put this down. This book was very helpful. It's in my bibliography. Hold on a second. These are the different books that I used or read and studied and researched to write this book. Where's the second page? No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Okay, so it took me two years to write that book because it was very complicated. And the basis of it was the I Ching. So I think a lot of people already know about the I Ching. It was brought onto the planet by Fu Chi. Thousands of years ago, Chinese, and it illuminates the DNA in 3D. One second. My son is loud over there. Okay. So, Richard Capra was a PhD physicist, and I read this book 10 years ago, 15 years ago, found it on the shelf. Uh, the books are very synchronistic there. I was just drawn right to it. I wasn't even looking for it. The Tao of Physics, an exploration of the parallels between modern physics and Eastern mysticism. And Fritjof Kepper is a PhD physicist. So let's look at some facts here about us. The first part I'm going to read to you has to do with quantum theory. Uh, has shown that all of these astonishing properties of atoms arise from the wave nature of electrons. So as we all know, we have trillions of cells in our body. We're talking about DNA here. We're trying to lay a ground understanding of what our cells really are, which I could just tell you really quickly. We are um, 98, the mass of the nucleus, the center of the nucleus is 2% mass and the rest of us the rest of us, who we are, is empty space. We are not, in fact, solid. <laughs> we just appear solid. And that's because of the velocity of the spin of our cells. Okay. That creates waves. The wave nature of the electrons. To begin with, the solid aspect of matter is the consequence of a typical quantum effect connected with the dual wave particle aspect of matter, a feature of the subatomic world which has no micro macroscopic analog. Whenever a particle is confined to a small region of space, it reacts to this confinement by moving around. And the smaller the region of confinement, the faster the particle moves around in it. In the atom, there are two competing forces, dualism, on the one hand, the electrons are bound to the nucleus by electric forces, which try to keep them as close as possible. On the other hand, they respond to their confinement by whirling around. And the tighter they are bound to the nucleus, the higher their velocity of spin will be. In fact, the confinement of electrons to an atom results in enormous velocities of about 600 miles per second that's how fast you're spinning. That's how fast everything in nature is spinning. And it also depends on your intention. So your mind controls every cell of your body and controls its spin rate. These high velocities make the atom appear rigid as a rigid sphere. Just as a fast uh, rotating propeller on a uh, helicopter appears as a disk. It's very difficult to compress atoms any further unless they give matter its familiar solid aspect. 
In the atom, then, the electrons settle in orbits in such a way that there is an optimal balance between the attraction of the nucleus and their reluctance to be confined. The atomic orbits, however, are very different from those of the planets in the solar system, the difference arising from the wave nature of the electrons. An atom cannot be pictured as a small planetary system. Rather than particles circling around the nucleus, we have to imagine probability waves arranged in different orbits. Whenever we make a measurement, we will find the electrons somewhere in these orbits, but we cannot say that they are going around the nucleus in the sense of classical mechanics. Stop a second. The, all your DNA in the trillions of your cells is in the nucleus. The RNA is not. The ribonucleic acid, which the geneticists deride, they just don't want anything to do with the RNA. Unless they want to make a vaccine to control you. <laughs> the RNA is completely jelly-like, immutable. The DNA sets up as a solid. That's what the geneticists mess with when they splice and do the... Everything they do, they do it with the 2%, 1% of the, which is the DNA of the cell. The rest of us, the rest of every cell of our bodies, 98%, 99% is empty space moving with the RNA. So when it comes to my book and talking about our evolution, I'm referring to the tRNA, which is the transfer RNA, which has five legs. I'll show you a picture. In the orbits, the electron waves have to be arranged in such a way that their ends meet, that they form patterns known as standing waves. These patterns appear where, whenever waves are confined to a finite region, like the waves in a vibrating guitar string or in the air inside a flute. When I read this part about um, how they're arranged so that their ends meet, it reminded me of watching uh, microbiology videos of how the DNA sequences, which is unreal, which you should go on YouTube and look at those. It's fascinating. And the scientists cannot figure out what's called the kinetic core, uh, how that works and why that uh, breaks down and mutates within the DNA sequence. And I think it has something to do with this. I have to research it further. Okay, where was I? All right. In the case of the electron waves inside an atom, this means that they can exist only in a certain atomic orbit with definite diameters. The electron of a hydrogen atom, which is the main chemical of water, it's found on the sun, by the way, the steam. Okay. Um, the electron of a hydrogen atom, for example, can only exist in a certain first or second and third orbit. Nowhere in between. Under normal conditions, it will always be in the lowest orbit called the ground state of the atom. From there, the electron can jump to higher orbits if it receives the necessary amount of energy. And then the atom is said to be in an excited state from which it will go back to a ground state after a while. The electron giving off the surplus energy in the form of quantum of electromagnetic or ELM radiation or a photon, which is the plus, okay? Electrons are negative, photons are positive. That's totally set up in the Zolkin, by the way, with the Maya left here to tell us how we are and how we move in the double helix. It's positive and negative, it changes every day. It's in our bodies, positive and negative all the time. Okay. The states of an atom, the shapes and mutual distances of its electron orbits are exactly the same for all atoms with the same number of electrons. This is why any two oxygen atoms, for example, will be completely identical. Okay, I want to show you this in a second. These are standing wave patterns in a vibrating string. So there's a different wave patterns, no biggie, not complicated. But when I do Reiki on patients in my office, that's I feel those waves. I feel it. They're magnetic. They change. The patient can change when they go out the door. I get them aligned. But of course, people have their habits, so they can go out the door and goof it up, do their own. 
do their old habits again. Um, they may be in a different excited state, perhaps due to collisions with other atoms, but after a while, they invariably return to the exact same ground state, which is why we continue to look the way we do. <laughs> the wave nature of the electrons accounts thus for the identity of atoms and for their great mechanical stability. We're stable creatures, so are trees, so are the squirrels. They're all made of DNA also, and you don't see anything in the natural world doing a huge fluctuation and changing all of a sudden. You know, we, on this planet, we tend to evolve gradually. Try to keep that in mind as you're watching these videos about cataclysm. And NASA is even warning, you know, they're warning that even through science and as they look at the past and history and evolution, everything happens a step at a time. Now, there are leaps in changes, which I don't know if it's coming or not. Uh, a further characteristic uh, feature of atomic states is the fact that they can be completely specified by a set of integral numbers called quantum numbers. Okay, that gets into the math. Let's go over here. All right. Stable. All right. The speed of the nucleons. Now... A nucleon in, in the nucleus of the cell with the DNA is a combination of a proton and a neutron. The body tends to be protons and electrons. So does the planet. So do the cycles of the planet. Protons and electrons, positive, negative. This is different. The whole If the whole human body were compressed to nuclear density... It would not take up more space than a pinhead. This high density, however, is not the only unusual property of nuclear matter, being of the same quantum nature as electrons. The nucleons, the protons and neutrons are often called that, respond to their confinement with the high velocities again. And since they're squeezed into a much smaller volume, their reaction is all more violent. They race about the nucleus with the DNA with velocities of about 40,000 miles per second. It's not minor, folks. It's physics. Okay. And he even says in here, don't go around telling people this. He said that in there. This guy, well, I mean, he's a university guy. He's in the scientific community. He's got to abide by a certain narrative. This one of the reasons I never became... A, a, a PhD physicist. And I would have loved to learn how to do that math. I just think it's so fun. I can kind of pick it up intuitively, but I refuse to abide by a narrative. I'm very intuitive. So anyway, so that's the speed things go. The electrons only constitute a tiny fraction of the total mass. But they give matter its solid aspect and provide the links necessary to build up molecular structures. They're also involved in the chemical reactions and are responsible for the chemical properties of matter. Nuclear reactions, on the other hand, generally do not occur naturally in this form of matter because the available energies are not high enough to disturb the nuclear equilibrium. So are you hearing what they're saying about mass? People look at their bodies and themselves and everything around them and it's dense and all this stuff and they assume it's mass. It's not, it's empty space. Moving at a certain speed. Which is why it appears and feels dense. So everything is energy. We're energy, we're intention, we're chi, we're time, we're, you know. But we're, if you can change your vibration, you can go through a wall. They teach military guys how to do it underground. So it's crazy stuff. The notion of elementary particles as the primary units of matter has to be abandoned. Okay, so that's just the beginning. Let me do these in episodes. And again, I'm, I'm kind of trying to set you up for understanding who we really are instead of looking in the mirror and thinking, oh, you're dense, you know. Um. We are in time in 4D, but we are also timeless with our CNS, our brain and our spinal cord. I'll get into more of that later.